average chain stress on this side, which is a level here. And the magnitude of the chain stress actually represented by this. Any questions? Okay, and now we're back to this one. This representing is a magnitude. And V Q over I T, that's very straightforward. What is V? V represent, for example, if you want to calculate the error chain stress, the V represent is the the um, the the transverse loading at the set selection at the section we pick up. And Q is the information about this area. For example, for this area you can see I try to uh, disengage from here. So basically, you can see the green light. This light representing is the neutral axis. So Q represent is the centroid of this side to the distance of this neutral axis multiplied with area here. Got it? That's the Q. And I is the width, the thickness from here to here, or total the width. And T, oh sorry, the T is the width, and I is the moment of inertia of the entire cross section about the neutral axis. Okay. This is a magnitude. Again, one more time, this is our loading scenario clamp here, we bend over here. So that means we have this scenario, and then the, then we have the edge pointing to that direction, like we indicate here, right? So what is the direction of the chain stress? And that's a one more, one new more thing. Going where? The same as this force. So for this demonstrations, the, the chain stress, so let me put it into, let me flip this one a little bit. So let me flip. A, B. So that will be the shin stress, the average. Tau average, like this. So right now, uh, to this step, I have provided you the magnitude and direction. So basically, we'll complete all the discussions for the theory. The remaining is how to apply this formula to calculate the, uh, the string stress in any kind of the beam under any kind of the loading. Okay. And uh, before doing that one, um, any questions? I would stop here for, say, three minutes. Uh, any questions? Because here is so critical, and otherwise uh, the follow-up will be detailed calculations. If no, let me um, do one more thing. Um, yes. What if your shearing thread at point A and point B is different? Yes. The v, yes. So how does that change from B to Q? Yes. Um, here for demonstration, I pick the size is so the different, the distance, the separation, I mean, from A to B is very large. But in concept, we can take the different ratio, uh, different uh, infinitesimal uh, uh, separation. Okay, so under that scenario, the whole formula will be pretty much uh, going to a small segment just like the rubber being cut. Okay, so for that case, V simply represent is the transverse loading on the section we pick. Okay. Um, based upon this, and I want to uh, introduce you one more tool uh, to, rep to represent such a bothersome uh, drawing. You can see so far we have done all the things it's based upon try to comprehend. So that means here we have the different viewpoint, either from the front view or we can go from the side view and here we have to do the 3D to get the information clearly labeled, which is very bothersome. 
Okay, so based upon this understanding, if you know the string stress we actually drawing is on this side, and then I want to get to that one more step, and for the purpose of easy illustrations for calculations. And that one is this. Okay. Let me take a look at from this viewpoint. And if you remember, in our chapter one, in our chapter one, let me re uh, rem uh, remind you. In chapter one, we talk about is this. Say so this is the element, the stress element. If we would have the stress on one side like this, and this element must be in static, in static equilibrium, then the directions of the string stress on the three sides must be like this. Okay, so for example, if this is our known information, then we can use this relation to quickly draw the direction of the string stress on the three sides. And those, the four are, have the same uh, magnitude, but they're pointing to such direction to make the whole thing equilibrium. This is from chapter one. And for example, and if this, let me extend it into cube, then that represents is if we know the string stress on one face, then on the other three faces, they must be acting like this. And I want to apply this concept to here. And that one, let me put into the cube like this. Let me say around the corner, let me select the cube like this. Okay, so that means you can see At the bottom side, the string stress. At the bottom side, the string stress is pointing to that direction. So the bottom side, the string stress is pointing to that direction. How about this side? If the bottom is go this direction, <coughs> how about this side? Up. Up. How about this side? Down. Good, you got it. So. From now on, we take the one most, the easy notation is this. Um, let me erase this one. Let me erase this one. So, on this side, on this side, the cross section, let me draw it, is this one. At B, this is the cross sections, and this is the shaded area we pick. So that means this side is what I draw here. So the bottom edge, the bottom edge is this side this age. Okay. So now for this case, um, like this. Okay. And no, like, like this. Okay. So now B is here. So what is the string force on this side? What is the direction of the string stress on this side? So right now the, so, uh, right? So here we can translate information. So along this side, we have the distribution of the string stress like this. So this is a very convenient way. So from this onward, we simply pick a section. And we can represent the string stress that's supposed to be in this 3D view on these sections in terms of this viewpoint. Are we okay? So right now here, right now you're looking at is this, this, this cube, this, this block is like this. And to, and to avoid the drawing of the 3D things, we simply look at this viewpoint. And we simply look at viewpoint here. And again, this represents it, you have to flip it up in your mind, in your mind to flip it up to look at the real things here. 
But right now for drawing, we simply look at this side. Will be okay? Can you follow me? Okay. And for this side, and this one represent uh, is this. Uh, this one um, is the direction of the string force and string stress. And this one, if you look at this carefully, B is the cross section. B is the section uh, here. And for this case, we have transverse loading that is um, negative at the B here. So the transverse loading at B should be pointing upward. Am I right? Transverse loading at the B section should be pointing upward due to this sign. So this is the P. The transverse loading at this section A here should be pointing downward with this magnitude P. Are we okay? Because we have a negative value here. So per our sign conventions, that should be have this. So at the cross section B here, the transverse loading is in this direction. This is V. And for our example, the magnitude of V equal to P. So right now we come to the really to the end of our introductions. To calculate the transverse loading induced string stress. And so far actually what we're looking for is we're looking for is the we we concerned is this side. Okay, and so far everything we've done is on here. And again to uh, ease our illustration by drawing. We simply try to convert all the information from this side to here. Then we come to this drawing. This drawing is the one we use from this point onward in all the text, in all the examples, in all the homework we found this viewpoint. And this distribution of the string stress actually represent is this side, and actually representing is this edge, in this one. Okay? So, um, go back right away to read the pages, the three pages on our textbook.